I was always what you'd call a casual cook. Never much interested in housekeeping, just picked it up as I went along. I thought I was doing all right, until one day we all got sick with some stomach wog. The doctor said it was food poisoning. How could that happen in my house? I thought I'd better find out. They all had big names. Staphylococcus, botulism, salmonella, germs. And they were breeding in my kitchen. The trouble comes when germs are allowed to grow, to reproduce until there are enough of them to be dangerous. Germs can thrive in kitchen conditions. All they need is a little food, warmth, moisture, and sufficient time to multiply and produce their poisons. In my kitchen, they had plenty of opportunities. I always kept a pot of soup on the stove, just like grandmother. We'd heat it up when we needed it. Perfect place for germs with all day to grow. The milk's always out, handy for a cuppa. Germs would love it. No wonder we've got flies and mice and cockroaches. I practically encourage them to come in and spread germs. I never remember to clean the gorilla. You'd never expect germs to grow on a tea towel, but they do. And then I just put them back on the clean plates when I wipe them. The dishes. Sometimes they wait all day for me to get around to them. There must be millions of germs. Even in the chips in the plates. Well, I was on the warpath. No more germs in my kitchen. Then I wondered, where do germs come from? How do they get here in the first place? I knew that pests like flies and rats can spread them, but then I read that germs can already be on the food when it comes into the kitchen, if it has been contaminated by careless handling during processing or packaging. It's hard to tell, but there are some signs to look for and ways of telling if food is fresh. I started checking the date stamps on food to see when it was packed and how long it could be safely kept before it had to be used. A tin is blown and its contents contaminated when it looks like this. It's dangerous. Have to take it back to the shop and let the council health inspector know. There might be more of them. This one's all right. The sprays will have to be washed off these before they're used. I'm careful where I get my meat. Like to know it's been handled and inspected properly. It's got a good red color, springy texture. No grayness or slime that could mean it's contaminated and it goes straight into the fridge. I picked up a few clues about storing food properly so germs won't have a chance to grow. They won't multiply if food is kept in the fridge or freezer. It's too cold for them. It doesn't kill them, but they won't breed. Cold keeps germs out of action and us out of danger. If the raw meat drip blood onto the cooked meat, germs could be transferred and since the ham and brawn won't be cooked again before it's eaten, there's more chance of germs causing trouble, so I store them separately. This sort of pre-cooked food has been through a lot of handling, so there's much more chance it's being contaminated. I've got to make sure they're heated thoroughly, right through before they're eaten. Oi! And the milk stays in the fridge. The chook started to defrost on the way home, so I'll have to cook it straight away. I never used to bother, but now I know too much about germs and I'm not going to give them the chance. Germs don't like it hot. Most of them are killed in cooking. Boil them for 20 minutes or so and they die. This is all right, but if I handled it with my fingers now, while it's cooling, Especially if I had an infected cut or a sore on my hands, I could contaminate it. Then, if I left it out at room temperature until tonight, I'd be giving germs the perfect opportunity to grow and multiply.
they'd have food, warmth, moisture and time. So this is going into the fridge. The same with any food that's prepared well before it's eaten. Leftovers go into the fridge too. But if there's any doubt, it should go out. If germs have been given an opportunity, they may have produced poisons which can survive cooking again. And that can be just as dangerous as the germs themselves. I was beginning to think I'd won the war against germs when I got to the chapter on personal hygiene. That's when I found out that most of us, even if we think we're healthy, are carrying germs around on our bodies all the time. In the bowel, the nose, the mouth, and without realising, we're transferring them to food with our hands. I didn't know I was a health hazard. I started to look more carefully at my unconscious habits. I never realised how many times my hands came into contact with my face and then the food. Which is especially dangerous if there are any sores or pimples. The pus from them, carrying staph germs, can be easily transferred to food. I had to remind myself to keep my hands and fingernails clean, not just after going to the toilet, but all the time. I had to remind myself to keep my germs to myself instead of spreading them onto the food and the kitchen utensils. I had to train myself and everybody else in new habits. I was becoming a fanatic. The doctor said it was nervous exhaustion. I was trying too hard and wearing myself out. The milk goes back in the fridge, right? So then I had to learn to relax and take things easy. I was doing my best. There was nothing to worry about.